Yeah, thank you very much for introducing me. I am happy to be here. Um, uh, I've been here for the last, I think, five, six years uh, on behalf of Semtech, and today I'm here for Dracula to speak about something that I believe is very disruptive for the entire IoT industry, and specifically for the LoRaWAN ecosystem. So I just recently captured an article from a study group from the EU called Cordis, and they publicized that basically calculating, extrapolating the current adoption of IoT, it will be like 78 million of batteries wasted every day. 78 million batteries a day, right? Is that sustainable? Definitely not. So I think we as an entire e IoT ecosystem have also an obligation here to think more sustainable. Um, if you do the math, it basically works out to be 30 billion. So it's not just LoRa, of course. Uh, there's all kind of other IoT wireless technologies inside here, like BLE, Wi-Fi, etc. But it's a huge number, right? There's new EU regulation coming up. Uh, some of that regulation came available and, and uh, applicable as of uh, summer this year. So I think we all have to watch what's coming out of Brussels in terms of design criteria for our sensors. So viability, so sustainability is one thing. Commercial viability is a different thing. Uh, we heard several times this today about TCO. If you do TCO from a customer perspective, right, what is the cost of an IT solution? Uh, I think Vinke showed earlier today that the sensor might be a fraction, like 50 euros or whatever, 100 euros. The total cost for the customer could be 500 euros, right? So the sensor is only a fraction of the total IT use case cost. And largely the cost is manual interventions, right? It's basically the deployment, onboarding, management, but also battery replacement, and I'll come to that later, but it's, it's just not viable for many use cases to have sensors that need to be battery replaced. Uh, just think about containers, containers carrying a, a, a tracker that could last maybe for five years on LoRaWAN, but then what, right? How do you find that container and going to make sure you're actually going to change the batteries? That cost is a multiple of 100 euros per container per tracker. Um, and then the form factor, uh, basically, we see many sensors uh, where basically the size is determined by the batteries, right? You have three batteries, that's why you have the thickness. Now, if you think about the sensor designs from a different perspective, eliminating the batteries and putting a foil on top where you can harvest, you get thinner sensors, smaller form factors. I'll skip this one, it's getting way too complicated. Um, but I think what I'm going to say here is that we see from science and universities, we see a lot of interest in energy harvesting for IoT, particularly for indoor photovoltaics. I think that's, uh, that's the sort of exciting part now of revolutionizing IoT, because basically the ambient harvesting is different than from the normal sunlight harvesting. We all know sunlight, uh, many vendors can do that. The challenge is indoor, right? The darker it gets, the more challenging it gets. And this is where Dracula comes in. So Dracula is about organic photovoltaic. So OPV is the specialty of our energy harvesting product. And indoor, you talk about basically less than 500 lux, right? Outdoor, it can go to 10,000 lux, 100,000 lux. Everybody can do it. Indoor, less than 500 lux. This is where it gets challenging. And this is where you want to make sure if you design a room sensor, an air quality sensor, that it can work right in low light conditions. So organic photovoltaic uh, has been also proven to be the most greenest of photovoltaic technologies. You will see some of our competitors that claim to have a green technology. Some technology is not as green as you may think. If there's silicon inside, silicon-based, uh, uh, photovoltaic cells, that's not green, right? That's not sustainable. Um, if you have organic materials and there's lead inside or other rare earths, that's not sustainable. So basically, organic photovoltaic is the way to go. And if you look, at, for example, at some of the metrics I show here, the energy consumed for a panel will be with silicon-based energy, har energy harvesting will be 50 to 100 times more than doing it with organic photovoltaics. So the energy balance is compl completely way out of whack, right? Another one, energy payback time. With photovoltaic, you talk about months, 
With silicon-based photovoltaic, you talk about years before you have paid back on the energy you invested in creating that product. Greenhouse, em greenhouse gas emissions, also there, OPV is way, way better than any of the other alternatives, which are monocrystalline, multicrystalline, and cadmium tellurid. So yeah, OPV is the way to go. Uh, for those who haven't heard about OPV, now you know what OPV is, right? So the, the energy harvesting, um, I mean, I came out of an RFID industry before I joined Semtech, uh, and, and we spoke about LoRa. How can you make LoRa more adopted? I mean, coming from an RFID industry, I talked to so many customers that hated any active technology. Batteries just kill a business case, right? So I came to LoRa, came to Semtech, and I've been sort of promoting the, con the notion of passive LoRa, right, to get rid of the batteries. So. I'm quite happy now to stand here for Dracula because Semtec actually invested in Dracula because we believe, Semtec believes that the way to go is have energy harvesting supporting low power wireless communications. That's the game changer. So passive RFID or RAIN RFID, we all know, and they turn like 50 billion units a year, right? Why? Because it's so easy and there's no battery issue. Then you have NFC-based harvesting. There's a company called Willits and there's several hundred million dollars in Silicon Valley. It's a game changer. It's BLE-based harvesting, right? So I think we all got to think about LoRa now moving on and become energy harvested for any other sensors that we're going to develop in the future. So the, th the way to think about it, it could be a hybrid solution. So you remain to keep the, the primary battery in the sensor, and you extend that with energy harvesting to just extend the lifetime of that particular product, right? What, the, what does it give you is the certainty that if the battery completely goes out, Let's imagine this tracker on the container. If the, the battery goes down, basically the location is off the radar. So if that asset moves on, last position seen is wrong. It's not the right location. Now, if there's an energy harvesting module in that tracker, it can last forever, right? Although it will not maybe blink every 10 minutes, but you will get maybe a daily blink where the tracker or that asset is. So extending the lifetime is the first step to go, I think, for any sensor manufacturer in the room here. Think about doing that, right? More disruptive, replace the entire battery, right? And I'll show you later how that can be done. So I'd like to talk a little bit about Dracula, Dracula Technologies. Um, our product is called Layer. Layer is basically standing on light as your energetic response, and it's inkjet printed. So we can print any shape or form. We're not stuck with any sort of shapes that come off a roll, or whatever, we have a production process that's completely flexible, and we can manufacture any shape or form. And we harvest light from ambient light, very, very low light conditions. Um, it can go as low as one lux, right? And one lux is almost completely dark. So you, the way of think about energy harvesting, you don't, you don't need all the time that kind of power or voltage anytime. You have time to harvest, right? So if a, if a tracker sits in the dark for whatever hours, and it got a little bit of light, it'll harvest that and it'll be able to blink or to send sensor data to a LoRaWAN gateway. Um, I mean, the cost efficiency that I point out here, 80% is just a number for some TCO. It depends on the perspective. Is it the customer perspective or the manufacturer perspective? But taking the customer perspective, it could be way higher than 80%. Um, the free shape I mentioned, um, you see here the, the form of this, uh, this bat, the right, that's just one of our examples, we can shape any form. It's a number of cells that come together, so the number of cells determines the voltage, and the size of the cells determines the, the ampere, right, the current. Now the, the thing that I highlighted here is green tech, so there's, there's no rare earths that we use. There's no toxic materials we use. There's no lead that we use, right? It's all recyclable. It's used on pet materials, foil, so it is completely recyclable. And many of the sensor manufacturers that approach us say they have customers, their customers telling them that they only want to have green sensors. They don't want to have any sensors that are not recyclable. So the pressure is coming from the market, from customers requiring us here as industry manufacturers to produce sensors that are fully green and not just green washed. If I, if I may. So a few words about Dracula. Um, headquarters in, uh, in Valence, uh, based in France. We have 30 employees. We're venture capital based. Uh, we're so far 25 million euros. 
We have some strategic investors like Semtech, but also companies like MGI, very strong in printing, and Israel Cards in card manufacturing. So we have strategic investors that believe in this technology becoming a game changer in the future. There's some financial investors as well, like BPI in France, as maybe some of you know. We won some innovation awards. Uh, the CES Innovation Award was, uh, was a prestige award that we won recently. Um, Solar Impulse, for those who know, also a really established organization in photovoltaics, and some other um, awards that you can see here on the, on the slides. Now, I was last week in France, and uh, I just uh, looked at uh, the progress that we're making on building a complete new facility, production facility, and it's really huge, right? We're going to lay out capacity for next year, which is going to be around 150 million units a year. So we're ready to roll, and we look forward for you guys to, to come with your product in volumes to us. So layer, this is the typical module that we start from with a customer to, to design a prototype or a pilot and test. This is a layered test module that we ship, and you see here basically a couple of the specs which I may some have not highlighted yet. I like to say like the st long-term stability is key, right? You don't want to have degrading after a couple of years. So we guarantee 10-year ten, ten uh, um, guarantee of performance in indoor environments and outdoor with direct sun exposure during five years in, in a row, we can guarantee five years, right? So it's, it's, the technology is perfect in indoor, uh, can have basically uh, perpetual life because the degradation will only be like 10, 20% after 10 years, so it could last maybe 20 years, but degradation will, of course, go on over time. Um, and not comparable from a cost perspective with replacing batteries, so let, let's, let's not forget that. Very thin material, um, very flexible, right? We can, we have arm wrist bands for some customers that can harvest energy with uh, location positioning for customers in hospitals, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's uh, the product. Some of the products that, from our customers that we powered, you see here uh, pictures um, on the left side. Uh, let me see. This one here is one of our customers, actually has a booth here, Miramico. They launched a sensor, a room sensor based on Dracula that can do light, uh, sorry, can do uh, temperature, uh, humidity, air quality, CO2, et cetera, right? So this sensor can work in the dark for days without any light, right? So that's, uh, that's the proposition that I think we are posing here from Dracula to you guys out there. The sensor can harvest from very, very low light enough energy to power up these kind of sensors. And Miramico has a product on their booth, so you can go and see it. Remote controls, also a very good product for harvesting because many, many batteries get wasted, which are not even part of the 78 million I showed you before that was just IoT. If you think about the number of batteries being displaced every year on remote controls, it's just mind-boggling. Temperature sensors on loggers, temperature loggers, NFC-based. We've done that, some projects with Avery Dennison. And you see some room sensors here as well, CO2 sensors, products that some of our customers have created. So if you're going to shift from batteries to energy harvesting, there are architectural considerations that typically a customer has to go through, and we help customers on that journey. We have electrical engineers that can work with you as a client to, to get there. Of course, it starts with the PV cell. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll go straight into this here. Um, so basically what you use is uh, typically the Dracula photovoltaic cell, and you use a, um, a PMIC, a power management IC. The PMIC basically manages the, the harvesting and the consumption in between, between the energy sources, which could be a solar cell with a primary or a secondary battery, and it has basically the application consuming the power, right? So to optimize its power play, uh, EPs is one of those PMIC manufacturers, and we do a lot of projects with EPs. They're actually going to be in a workshop tomorrow. We have 11 o'clock a workshop, and we're going to demonstrate how we design those integrations from a PV cell, OPV cell, with a PMIC into a sensor where Miramico is going to show their design of their air quality sensor. So this is, this is the news that we released today, uh, and it's hot. Um, many people in this industry have tried trackers, and uh, I was with Semtech uh, until last year. 
we launched, Semtec launched the LoRa Edge LoRa Cloud. Many of you probably know that LoRa Edge LoRa Cloud. Basically, you get a, lo a location from a sensor or a tracker without doing the computation on the tracker. You take the computation into the clouds, offload the battery consumption of a tracker. That was a breakthrough innovation. We take it one step further. We say, OK, having a tracker that can do such low power geolocation, if you're going to power that with energy harvesting, you have an autonomous tracker. Autonomous tracker that gets GPS locations without a battery. How cool is that? Right, so that's what we demonstrate. If you come to our booth, we'll show you the product. We've engineered that with a French engineering house. We used the reference tracker of, of Semtec. We used the Things network stack for the, for the network provisioning. And basically, we've demonstrated that this can work in very, very low light environments. So warehouses, logistic warehouses, distribution centers, where you have pallets, boxes, crates, or whatever, in the dark, you can still locate it without batteries. And it's a complete game changer, right? So we wanted to demonstrate it here today, where we have many sensor and tracker manufacturers working based on LoRa. Come to our booth, and we'll show you and, and, and explain to you that these trackers based on Dracula can make a big difference. I mean, I talked about the TCO before, where I've talked to many, many logistics companies that basically would love to deploy a LoRa tracker or a LoRa sensor, and they say, the battery is the non-starter. We will not start to deploy on a large global scale millions of units if it's battery-based. It has to be passive, right? So here we are. We have a LoRa passive device that can provide geolocation indoor and outdoor seamlessly at any given time, right? So I think that's what we were very excited about to share with you. And we hope that we can help many of you to develop your product or next generation of products to become Dracula powered. So we're at the booth of 8A8, and we look forward to talk to you. And if there's any time for questions, I'm happy to take them. to max out the capacity of your factory. Uh, it depends on light conditions, like 200 lux. With 200 lux, we've demonstrated to get every six hours a blink of a location. And 200 lux, this is like, this is probably 100 lux here, right? I mean in production, you know, to, to, to... Manufacture units. Yes. So as I said, we create a huge production facility in France now, so 150 million units a year, translating to, what, 10 million units a month, right? So we're ready to roll. And when do you think you'll get towards that kind of scale? I mean, how fast is this going to go? We're ready. As of January, the whole production facility is there, and we can take orders, right, until you go on large-scale volumes. Okay. Happy to talk to you. <laughs> no further questions, then, again, thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you.